Welcome back, everyone. A week away to El Clasico and boy, do Barca look unconvincing, right? Mm, yeah, you can, I think unconvincing might be too kind, given that <laughs> second half we just had. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a disastrous second half, and it's it, it's watching the game. I was like, okay, in the first half, Barca and I have complete control, and I was wondering whether Celta were going to do anything, but in the second half, boy, did they do that? Yeah, I mean. The thing is that when I looked at the lineup for this game, I saw Balde at, le- at right back again and Marcos Alonso at centre back. My immediate reaction was to go to Instagram and say, We're done. <laughs> like, Aspas is going to minimum. But thankfully, we had Pestegan in good form and that didn't happen. But boy, like you said, not the best way to prepare for a massive week. No, no. And, and the thing is that Celta sort of, and this is a weekend where there were lots of gifts in terms of goals. It was a low-scoring weekend. But Celta mm-hmm. gives the first goal to Barcelona. And then mm-hmm. it's like when they react, it's like it, the easiness, the like how the ease of creating chances against Barcelona, against the setup, must be frightening for Barcelona fans. Well, I think a lot of people will react and say, do my, do my. I'll try and be kind to the Barcelona defence because we have a left-back playing at right-back and a left-back playing at centre-back. Before the game, I knew we'd struggle. So I'm just... And the fact that we struggled is not too surprising to me. So I am hoping that with another centre-back and a right-back, things might be a little bit better. But that does not excuse the rest of the team for not creating any chance or to the 80 something to move for the whole second half. Yeah. And I think the one area where I'm surprised that they didn't do as well as the midfield, because in this game, I expected, okay, the defense is going to be poor. As you said, maybe a Celta should have scored one or two if they had their shooting boots on. But mm. I did expect the midfield to protect the defense and to create chances. And Lewandowski, he was pretty much anonymous in this game. So yeah. yeah, I was in there apart from the one shot and the dive or not dive, it, it was just it was just poor all around from the team. And you mm-hmm. sort of have to like even be kind to the fence that they held on because there were some good blocks to mm-hmm. prevent Celta. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the defense definitely as bad as it looks on paper. They did a lot of last ditch stuff. I was disappointed, like you said, in the rest of the team for not giving them more protection. But at the same time, I feel like when you don't have your regular defense behind you, it kind of affects how you are going forward. I think that would happen to any team, but still it's not really an excuse. So we should definitely do better. Yeah. That okay. said, that said, we won a game that we were lucky to win. <laughs> Very lucky. At the end of the season, if we win the day, I'm not going to care how badly we played in the second half. So the fact that we played bad and won, I feel I think me and I, you know, me and you, we, we discuss sometimes off pod. I'm like Real Madrid have this ability to get through tough games that I don't think Barcelona really have. So maybe we should credit them for surviving the Celta onslaught. Yeah, but the thing is. Mm-hmm. Inter Milan won't have Oscar Rodriguez <laughs> or <laughs> Paciencia or and last one. You're going to play against Lautaro, Barella, Chananoglu. How are Barca going to stop that? Because in the first leg, it seems like Barca could not break down Inter Milan to save their life. They were always at risk in the counter attack. Yeah. Coming Defe- to the camp, new Inter they don't really need to win. This game, mm-hmm. you can just defend and get a point, and that'll be a very good result. Yeah, definitely, we have to. I mean, at this point, I'm more hope. I'm more hoping that we win than expecting we win, which wasn't the case before the international break. Damn international break! But anyway, I hope the boys, you know, the Barca that we saw before the international break shows up on Tuesday, on Wednesday. Otherwise. Sayonara Champions League. <laughs> and how big of a failure would it be if Barca gets knocked out of the Champions League, given the summer spending they had, uh, the, yeah, it's, and um, the enthusiasm and everything? Mm-hmm. Well, 
even though we have a tough group out still, it's still definitely a failure, no matter how you want to look at it. It's, I feel though it's more of a failure financially than anything. Mm. I, I feel if we get, I hate to say this, but if we lose and get knocked out or we win the league or something, I won't, personally, I won't care too much because I'd rather win the league than Champions League. But I still want to go far enough in Champions League. So it will definitely be a failure to me. Yeah, especially given the levers and the fact that levers are mostly for La Liga revenues, not for Champions League revenues. That means that Champions League is more important financially for the club than mm -hmm. finishing first or second in the league. But the league is always important in terms of sports and objectives. Next week is El Clasico, Spain's showpiece event. Barcelona, I would have said before the international break, I would have said that maybe they had a chance to even win this. But at the moment, given the way they're playing, and we, we'll talk about Real Madrid in a second, the way Real Madrid have been so far, I only see one winner in there, and that's Real Madrid. Mm. Yeah, um, I feel like, yeah, exactly. Before the international break, I was way more confident about everything but you know injuries and subpar performances have brought me down to right so okay well, let's look at it in the logical way before not using my oh Barca are going to dog walk Real Madrid again mentality let me just calm down if we get a draw or rather let me put like we're still in first place after that game it's a yeah. huge win for me even though Real Madrid are I mean they they don't look as dangerous as they were before the international break. They're still very dangerous. So, given that it's away from home, I will happily accept the draw and go back to Camp Nou and we go again for the rest of the season. Yeah. Or against Bayern, though. Yeah, if we're still alive. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing with the season, though, because we're gonna have so many breaks. It makes it so difficult to like figure out to predict something. But I'm yeah, gonna put spot here. If you're doing a prediction on how Barca is gonna do this week, what do you think will happen? <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay. I think we'll somehow find a way to beat Inter. Like we'll get back together and then but it will maybe cost us an important player and then Real Madrid will beat us. Yeah, I, I'm going to go to draw with Inter and Madrid wins the classical. But let's talk about Madrid because... They... Oh, so there's one more thing now that's mentioned. Sure. If Real Madrid don't have courts well back, I'll give us more of a chance. Uh, yeah. But still, they, I feel that they're doing a good job protecting him right now. He's doing a good job. Yeah, because they got their first clean sheets of the season in La Liga against Hetafe. And Lunin barely had any work to do. It seems like the aim and the objective for this game was to score early and just to defend and to get the clean sheets. And they were successful in that. I think we're shortchanging them a little. I think they tried to get the second goal. Just they just yeah. uh, they were they in the second half for them, they weren't neither team was really at it. It was kind of yeah. it was kind of they made a secret oh, it's not to score <laughs> anymore. Yeah. But in reality is that to Real Madrid not having enough to break Etafe down, Etafe not having enough to take to create very good opportunities. Like they had a couple of shots from distance, but stars about it. So yeah, it was a pretty no, it was a pretty routine win for Real Madrid. Yeah, and to be fair to Real Madrid, it's like they did have a couple. There was a triple save that I believe Soria made. Mm -hmm. Triple Valverde. save plus slash block. Yeah, yeah, and Valverde had some shots from outside the area but in all honesty it was a game where besides the goal like nothing really happened happened and that's the i think that's also a sign of champions and it, it reminds me of a comment diego simeone made after the madrid derby and he was like this real madrid side reminds me of the team i had in 2014 that we could just like arrive in the area and score and we can just like close out the game and they did that to a t in this game yeah, yeah. And normally this season, apart from the Osasuna game, when Real Madrid do go ahead, you never hear of them, you know, conceding an equalizer, conceding a late, or conceding a late winner. So that's just how 
really like we talk about how good the attack is, but their defense is pretty good, even though they concede the odd goal every game. They still do enough to close teams out. Yeah, and and even without Benzema, because last season it would have been an issue with Benzema missing. And last season, I remember they lost this game. Uh, they lost this fixture, but Benzema was still there. But like this season, Vinicius, Rodrigo, they're working to full effect. Rodrigo yeah. has been brilliant. He maybe could have scored a goal if he wasn't offside. So it's it seems it's all good for Madrid. But where do you see do you see a potential weakness in this team? Because the weaknesses for Barcelona are obvious, but for Real Madrid, not so much. Yeah, I mean the main weakness you can see is Courtois being missing. And I hear that yeah, he's no longer a guarantee for the Pasco. The other, well, the thing is that they've been playing so well without Benzema, so I can't really call that a weakness. Yeah. But normally when they don't play with him, they usually struggle. Well, that, the thing is that, I don't really know. We just have to see in the classical, don't we? If, I think Benzema is back now, so that won't really matter. But besides maybe that, I don't really see any weakness right now. And this might be a controversial point, but like something that I've noticed when Real Madrid play without Benzema this season is that they're more, it's faster. It's like, it's, it's more direct, it's more quick. And is that a good sign that it can play a different way? Like when he's not there, they can play more quick yeah. the way. And when he's there, yeah. they can play that like Drago de position sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. Not ha- not having Benzema and then having his replacement be effective definitely changes how you approach playing against them. Because while you wouldn't, while you would be, how you defend Benzema is different to how you defend Rodrigo through the middle. So I feel like that has definitely confused teams that they played against. Yeah. Just that so far they have not played a team that has necessarily bullied them in terms of having possession that that i feel like that's where they struggled against us in the last classic but that that's where i'm saying their weakness might be but then i'm just i'm just basically grasping at a little bit of extra because if the rodrigo in that classical is not the same rodrigo we have today so that's something i have to keep in mind and we have to remember in that Costco, Rodrigo, I, I don't think he even started. He was Modric that started. No, yeah, Rodrigo played. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was Rodrigo, Vinny, and. No, Rodrigo played because if Benzema is in there, it's Vinny, Valverde, and someone else. Yeah. And it wasn't Asensio, it wasn't Mariano. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I do, all in all, I do think with, with or without Benzema, they're definitely a dangerous team. Yeah. But team that's struggling at the moment on the other side is Sevilla. Jorge Sampaoli came in and it started really well for them, but they, they fell into the same patterns that they did pre Lopsegui. The good news is that Marcao was actually there to stop, to stop the bleeding. Like he was, he was really, physically imposing in this game and he's been such a miss for them because he hasn't played at all for Sevilla this season and because of that the defense lacked a bit of leadership which they had today they seemed more secure they seemed to be able to attack but in second half Athletic overwhelmed them in my opinion yeah definitely Sevilla started well it, it was typical of a San Pauli team playing with lots of energy and flair and attack just, I feel like Sevilla tired themselves out on this team. Like the team at the moment just isn't equipped to play in it's no down Lopetegi ball, which they've played for so long. But, and yeah, Marcao definitely has been a miss all season. Lopetegi will be kicking himself that he's <laughs> he's fully fit now <laughs> and not maybe three weeks ago. It's also funny because Yanuza is the other Sanya and he hasn't even appeared yet. So if he comes and makes a difference up top, Lopetegi will be tearing at the chair even more. Yeah. That said, yeah. Atle- like you said, Athletic really should have scored two or three in this second half, if not for Marcao and 
Athletics old faults coming out again. <laughs> yeah, some bad finishing by Iñaki Williams. <laughs> and it's, it, it's, it, reminded me of, it reminded me of the Dortmund game because against Dortmund, I, I felt they didn't play too badly compared to this one. Like, I felt in Dortmund, they were against Dortmund, they were slightly better than they, they were against Athletic. But the difference is you had the Dortmund side that were so, so clinical. Mm -hmm. And this this week you had an athletic side that weren't that clinical. But do you see any improvements that gives you faith for them when they go to Germany that it can get a result or, or get a win somehow stay in the Champions League? Or is is that it for them? What do they to stay in the Champions League? They need to beat Dortmund by three goals, right? Uh, they just need to beat Dortmund. Because but just beat Dortmund. Just beat Dortmund. Because if they win, then it'll be there'll be two points behind Dortmund. But to get the head to head, they need to win by three. But to stay in, they just need to beat Dortmund because Dortmund still has to play City. And if by the time Sevilla plays City, City are already through, they might rest players for that game. And it might be a much easier game than we're thinking compared to Dortmund going to Copenhagen. Sure, 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 sure. Just, well, given that we've seen both a very good Dortmund and a very bad Dortmund this season, I wouldn't really rule them out. I just, I, I can have, if I have 50% faith that Barca would go through this group, I have 10% faith of Barca, yes, so I think it might be it this week, yeah. which is a shame, honestly. But if San Paoli can impose his style and get them putting in good 90 minute performances, then say they drop into the Europa League, they definitely have a chance to make make this season a good one at the end. True, but at, at the moment, they are in the relegation zone, so. Honestly, uh, I didn't even notice at all last <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah, they're in the relegation zone. And do you think they can even attempt to fight for top seven? Or <laughs> no. is it just like, no. Stabilizing in La Liga and like let's stabilize, try and finish as high as possible, and you know do well in the cups. But I think top seven is too much to ask at this point. In by the new year, things might be different. Like three consecutive wins can just put you in a completely different place, change the feeling. Yeah, I just don't think they're going to get even a win this soon in the league because they still have. Difficult opponents coming up. Yeah, they have Mallorca and Valencia next, which on paper are winnable games. A win against Mallorca, but Valencia are pretty good now, so I don't know. Sure. And I, I think Valencia can beat them too. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what makes it this situation intriguing. Athletic, what what did this performance say about them? Because this was given how Sevilla is, like, they're naturally, they're, at times they're a big club, and this was, like, a first really big test for them away from <laughs> home. Um, what did we learn about them? We learned that they still have that bad tendency to finish chances badly, but the way they overwhelmed Sevilla in their own home, I feel is pretty good. So that I think that a point at the Sanchez page one is nothing to frown upon. So I think we'll learn more about them against Atletico. That game will definitely be much more difficult. Yeah. And Atleti, who won against Girona. And this was a weird game because I, I feel for all the victory, it's like it's like after they scored, they just relaxed. And Atleti, mm -hmm. they scored the first one, Korea scored, and then they scored the second one thanks to a beautiful gift. One. From Juan Carlos and then it's they were very comfortable until Rodrigo Riquelme scores <laughs> against them in front of his like his home club and mm -hmm. after that it just it was just like back to the wall defending all black like they're still gonna save Barca in this game but all black man he was in god mode like the yeah, shot all, was all, all black and the go post yeah. were really on <laughs> athletic side yesterday it's True, because after the Barcelona game, I was like, I've seen a game like this before, but I can't quite remember. Then I just remembered now, I'm like, oh, Atleti had the same kind of performance yesterday. And yeah, for Atleti, this is their first win against Girona since they came up to it. So I feel like that's big. 
Yeah, it's very good. And the thing is, Antoine Griezmann started this game. We heard from Laporta that the deal was done. Griezmann is an Atletico Madrid player for 20 million plus 4 million in variables. It seems like Atleti won this war against Barcelona in terms of playing time. Mm, yeah, definitely Atleti. Yeah, they definitely beat us in, the, in terms of this team because with the game they were playing, if they would succeed that it would have gotten a player who doesn't want to play for us with no money and increased wages. But I feel in a way we won because we avoided that worst case scenario. So now ultimately, ultimately, both teams got what they want. We got money, they got Griezmann. Yeah. So yeah, let's not talk about that again. Sure, sure. But how's that going to help them against Brugge? Because they, they were outplayed in Belgium. Um, Jukla, they filled the Jukla test. Will it be a different story in Madrid? It depends on which Atleti show up. It is that I must, I knew Atleti would make their group difficult, but I thought they make it difficult by drawing against Bayer Leverkusen and maybe a win Brugge, not losing to both of them by a good amount of goals. Yeah. So I honestly do not know what's going to happen. Yeah, but to be May- fair, Brugge have been good in this Champions League. They're the top, they have nine points. I believe they're one of the few teams that haven't conceded a goal yet so far. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not it's going to be a very tough tough game when they come back to Madrid. Yeah, I, I think Athletic will beat them in Madrid though. It's a bit different case, but it seems that to think that Fabriga are so close to finish to get into the round of sixteen is honestly incredible. Yeah, it is. And on this game, Rodrigo Raquel me. Um, do you think? based on his performances like so far, does he have a place in this athletic team? Or do you feel maybe he should get another loan? Yeah, yeah we'll have to see how he does over the, by the end of the season to really say that. But based on how he's playing right now, I don't see why he shouldn't be like a regular sub because he's doing, granted, he's, he has the opportunity to play more minutes, but he's doing better than a couple of athletes forwards right now yeah yeah he is and let's move on to another high profile game we had this week that's Rosa Sudad versus Villarreal I was so disappointed with the performance of Villarreal today because I don't feel they I don't feel they were up against it but Larreal they really impressed me although they went back to their 1-0 to Larreal days but <laughs> I feel they I feel they were very solid and they could have scored more yeah it was I, I don't feel it was the same one nil to Lariel of last season because he, they did try and get that second goal, but against a team that was tough defensively, it's always difficult. Yeah, I, I, but like we said, Lariel are really, really impressive right now. This is their fifth win in all competitions in a row. This is the fourth game in a row that Bryce Mendes is scoring. Merino now has four assists in the league. That's the most by far by, by himself right now. And like you, I was also very disappointed with Villarreal. And remember how we've talked about like how teams at the bottom, yes, they can play a certain way against top clubs to get the results, but they should definitely try and play to win against their fellow rivals. You remember that, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel we could apply this same thing to Mr. Emery because the tactics you should use against Bayern shouldn't be used against L'Oreal because <laughs> you have a better squad than them. Granted, you have some injuries, but I felt like they're... Yeah, I, I, and the West on Twitter was like, Emery is Mr. Overcautious, and I'm inclined to agree with him. Yeah. Today, I feel like starting Coquilin as a winger in this kind of games is redundant. Like, why not just go for four really attack-minded players and see what you can do? Yeah. And it seems like the goal is dried up for this VRA outside, or it's it seems like whenever things go difficult for them in terms of score, creating opportunities, they just disappear. And how much of that is that with Jared Moreno not being available? Yeah, when Jared is in this team, they're completely different sides. So, yeah, yeah 
Definitely. And Danjuma is just should, coming back from injury. So should, should that be an excuse for them? Should that be an excuse for Emery? Because you have Samu, you have Pino, who are like bright young stars of this league. Mm -hmm. You have Danjuma, you have Morales, who you don't start. You have a creative midfield of midfield of uh, Buena and um, Los Celso. Although Los Celso was quite poor in this game, but yeah, like you also have to look team. at the players too. Yeah. I feel like all of them are hitting bad form at the same time, which is just awfully bad from the manager's perspective. Because, it, because besides in the in the in the conference league, they're bullying everybody because they're way better than everybody. Yeah. But in the league, yeah. I mean, the, the Liga defenses are built different, so <laughs> they're not really having their way right now. And that you can definitely point at both parties. That, but in the defense of the players, having to make your Pino play as an auxiliary right back for most of the time, you're not in possession, isn't going to help you score goals, is it? No, it's not. It's not. But yeah, another so team that's struggling to score is Real Betis. <laughs> and they keep on getting red cards. <laughs> away from home. Away from home. What, what's up? <laughs> they, they were, they were going to Roma. To, to give them credit, like they did, mm -hmm. get, they did get a big win in Rome, which puts them in a strong position in, in their group in the Europa League. But you have to get the business done in La Liga, too. Yeah, for sure. I think last week was the first time they've not scored all season, and that's continued yeah. now. So they definitely want to address that. And with the defending, like last ditch defending again leads to a red card. I don't know. I honestly don't know what's going on. Yeah. Are they? Are they trying to do something that the rest of us aren't aware of? <laughs> I have no idea. But the, the one thing I'll give Betis credit for is that traditionally they've been known to have a soft center. They've been known to be like weak in certain conditions. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they've considered a red card, and I believe out after those red cards in both games, they didn't concede a goal. They got mm -hmm. a they deserved a point against Celta, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And they got a point today. So it shows how well they've grown in terms of being a more solid team yeah however if they want to get the camp get the fourth spot i feel and in, in the fourth spot that's very open it there are like four or five teams that can fight for it they need to show more and they need to do it with all the silly mistakes that they're making at the moment yeah. i also feel like the injuries they're having they, they've really had a tough hand tough Block with injuries because one me is very important to how they play. He's gone to the new year. Fakir relapsed again. So it's really, they're really relying on Luis Enrique to come up with goods. And he started really well in his Betis career, but he's just a kid coming from another country. They can't just put everything on him and say, hey, just carry us. So definitely, I feel kind Yeah, his birthday was really good. Yeah, it was really good, but they need more from Canales, I think. I don't think yeah. he's played. Again, I again I feel like this international break came at the wrong time for a lot of people. <laughs> you can say that again. It's I, I would never get the wisdom of FIFA put in the international break when they did. I do not get it. If they what would have been better, right? It's yeah. just doing the two games for the international break before the World Cup, that you get both your Nations League stuff or whatever, and yeah. you get crucial warm-up time with your players so you can figure out what you're going to do for match day one. Not that on match day one, you're figuring out, okay, do I play Busquets here? Do I play Sarabia here? Like, come yeah. on. And, and the thing is, like right now with the Nations League, and sorry we're going off tangent, but it creates an extra extra confusion with international groups and international football because you're trying to prepare for so many different things. Do you really prepare for the Nations League when the World Cup is just around the corner? Like if this was just a friendly, you can prepare friendly for the World Cup, but you're preparing for, you're playing another competition, which makes no sense. The international calendar for me is super messed up at the moment, but the less talk about it, the better. There are more positive things we can talk about, like Valencia winning their first away game this season against Osuna. <laughs> uh, I had a feeling this was coming because I believe Valencia going to Pamplona, it's always been easier in recent times, 
last season, Valencia won 4 1. There, this season, it looked like it was going to be a thrashing, but Osuna pulled one back right at the end. But Edson Cavani, like he, he showed up oh, oh, despite the fact that he missed a penalty. Yeah, Cavani, uh, Cavani was definitely very good. And as much as I want him to score, he let himself down because <laughs> I really like Cavani. But That's he was really good. Herrera, man. He's a demon. Yeah, he didn't save it. He didn't save the penalty. He didn't That's say the right. penalty, but like he got into I think he got into his head the same way he got into yeah, his head. Yeah, this guy's Sergio Herrera is different, but anyway, <laughs> Cavani was really good. Like he really associated well with Lino and Clivert. Clivert got his first goal, and even though Lino didn't score, I felt he was excellent in this game. And again, another athletic only really playing well. So Athletic had a good weekend in terms of more than just their results. Yeah, yeah Loni's on fire. I know. Even Giuliano got an assist. <laughs> so it's it's intense. But like for Valencia, I'm very I'm very pleased because I feel like this performance was something that Valencia really needed, especially away from home against an, mm-hmm. a tough opponent. And it's continues to bolster up the good feelings behind Gattuso. But I would say for Valencia fans that they shouldn't get too too excited. <laughs> So far, because yeah, it's, it's not dangerous to get too excited. Yeah, and I, and I looked at Bordelas to start, and Gattuso is just one point better than Bordelas at this point in the season. So, oh, wow. but, but, although the, the style is different, but you have to give credit to Bordelas last season because he did do a very good job. He did have better players, yes, but coming from where Valencia came from to get to a cup final, I feel. Even though we're enjoying Valencia more, we still have to give credit where credit is due because like uh, exactly, yeah. it was it was it was strange when I found out that Bordelas was going to be sacked. Too. Yeah. That I was like, he hasn't really done enough to. Me. I was like, he did what you guys wanted Marcelino to do and didn't win the cup. <laughs> so why he sacked you? <laughs> I'm, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this if this brings up a, a painful memory tag. I just. <laughs> felt like it would be a missed opportunity because <laughs> I because my because I believe Marcelino last this week talked about this whole thing again. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's the way Valencia is run. It's it blows my mind because you have a club that with the right amount of back in they can they can like at the moment they could be like a fourth force. Now the Sevilla is not there, or last season mm-hmm. we definitely could have taken advantage of the big three of the big of the top four not not playing well and they could have snuck into the Champions League but you have owners who don't really want to invest money into the into the club they don't want to do anything they're waiting for the stadium to be built and if Spain does get the World Cup place it seems like the stadium will be built and maybe after they build the stadium they would peacefully peace out i was thinking of more colorful language but i didn't want to say that but <laughs> but it, it, it's a it's weird but at the moment right the one thing that they are doing well is like i feel socially they've got some things right in that the fans they feel more connected to the club like yeah. when, it, when you go to watch games in the style it's not like two or three years ago where it was almost quiet because they got rid of some fans but now it's like those fans yeah. are back it's yeah. Atmospheric people are traveling to see Valencia play. Gatuso has been a correct choice because he brings in that enthusiasm, that positivity mm-hmm. to the club. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I also liked this picture. I saw one picture where I think he's telling the fans to applaud the players, not the team. So yeah, I feel like that's really nice, and I'm sure the players really respect him and possibly fear him but <laughs> yeah you almost tore the Akabi's head yeah, like, yeah as I was going to mention you almost the Akabi <laughs> scored but got a silly red and got too, so let him know what he was thinking <laughs> true yeah. yeah but en- enough about Valencia it's, it was good news for Almeria because we we're wondering where, when those sport the goals without Sadik but it came in threes today or yesterday. yeah 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 good things always come in threes don't they yeah they do <laughs> yeah but again, another yeah, boomer goalkeeper was at fault for the first goal. Yeah, for sure. That goal, when they got it, came from an absolute horror by somebody you don't usually associate them with in Diego Lopez. <laughs> yeah, honestly, what's with all these goalkeepers trying to be Buffon? Like, just no, the chance to be Manolo Reina, both Manolo, man. <laughs> yeah, 
Anyway, yeah, it was really good for Almeria to get goals. It was important for the strike, the new striker, El Bilal, to score his first goal. I thought it was really good. He scored the goal through great anticipation. And Barba, another new signing, had a good game with two assists, but then he got sent off. So they're not going to have him next week, which is, you know, bothersome. Yeah. But all in all, you they've gotten an important win that leaves them clear of the relegation zone. Yeah, and I feel for Almeria, it's important for them to allow Ruby to do his job because mm -hmm. they've changed the team a lot. They've changed the team quite late. You could blame Planning, La Liga's wage cap, whatever. They sold Sadiq late on into the season. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, it's like for him, and I feel for what's happening at Sevilla as well, it's they have to do the preseason, the, the normal league games, and that's not easy for any manager. So the fact that Amaria finally got a win after Sadiq was sold and they finally scored goals, I'm very pleased for Amaria, and I hope that they continue to strengthen because I do like their projects because I do feel they're doing something different in terms of bringing in young players, and I want to see more of that. The thing is, though, I don't feel we've seen enough of the young players yet. Like, we get there's a son I really wanted to see, but he hasn't appeared yet. So hopefully yeah. we see him more in the future. Yeah, I feel at this point they're just trying to, like, put out the fire. So maybe mm -hmm. when they think... So that's understandable, well. because yeah. look at Ramazani, for instance. He started all their games except this one. So yeah. I feel like Ruby at this point is like, let me go for experienced heads instead of putting faith in youngsters who have to sink or swim most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And that's the final game is Cadet Espanol. And wow, Jose Lu, he came clutch for Espanol, but you you didn't like the look of the comps. <laughs> well, comps and Alvar, like we talked about about them last week and this week again. <laughs> Alvaro was dropped and then Lecomte comes and does this. To be fair to Lecomte, he made a very good save at 2-2 two -two to prevent Cadiz from scoring the third because Espanyol were doing okay until Cadiz got that goal through Lucas Perez. And then with the home atmosphere and everything, Cadiz really prepared Espanyol for the last 20 odd minutes of the game. And um, Lecomte made a really good save. So I feel we should give him some credit there and the goalpost also saved them because Lucas Perez had a really good free kick that was saved and yeah both teams uh, for Espanyol is frustrating because this is the second week in a row that they've led and dropped points yeah and with Espanyol it, who's to blame for this poor situation because they started quite poorly and I remember when we we're discussing about our La Liga predictions we had them pretty up like mid table, maybe they can mm -hmm. do something or change for Europe because of the quality of manager that they brought in. Mm -hmm. But six points out of 24 points, possible points, is not very good. Yeah. And besides the goalkeepers that we mentioned, I feel like the whole RDT saga really it was a mess around from the player's side, from the coach, maybe. Like, I don't get why. I, I feel like if I'm the coach, like this guy's too good for me not to try and get him on my side, no matter what. Yeah. And we did say that if they were to do anything this season, a lot would rest on his shoulders. And then the fact that they didn't sell him at all during the window and they eventually sold him for peanuts compared to what they originally wanted. That one is definitely on the board. Oh man, yeah. that that they were so stupid because they started with seventy million. That's the pause. Like, then they're like forty who is, million. Who is who is putting down seventy million in a post-COVID climate? Except you're an English club. Then they went up to twenty-five million. Then they sold him for like eight million plus for some change. <laughs> yeah, that that was just saying. That's just yeah. man. But Jose is doing the job right now, so yeah, he that's is. good. Yeah, talking about like incompetent boards, how incompetent are Elche? They sacked Francisco, right? <laughs> Granted, he wasn't, things weren't going too, too great for him, but 
at the same time, they I feel the transfer transfer market wasn't that great. Besides maybe Roger, and losing Mojica was like quite dumb in my opinion. Yeah. But Francisco's gone. They're yet to replace him with someone at the moment. There's rumors it might be some guy from Argentina. It might be Paco Lopez. Paco who? Paco Lopez, the Levante guy. I, why did I think of that? Why did I picture Abelardo's face first? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Paco Lopez. Uh, Paco Lopez is a good choice, honestly. I feel Levante did him dirty last year by being too impatient. But all in all, like you said, Elche's board is really, really <laughs> incompetent. Like Francisco, after all the good he did, he didn't, you have to remember, he didn't last a full year. Yeah. Escriba lasted like a year plus, and he was good for the most part. I don't know, man. Yeah. The this whole sack. Sat- okay, they, they yeah, sat- oh, sorry. Sorry. You were go- no, go on, go on. Go on. Like, I, I was about going to mention. They sacked a manager every season since they've been back up. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like, this whole merry go round of in and out coaches is like, it's like Jerry Watford with less planning. Because <laughs> at least Watford planned that they're going to suck a coach at the end of the season. Yeah. You, you these guys just do it whenever they feel, whenever they get a bit panicky. But yeah, yeah, it's really not looking good for Elche right now. Roger is one of the reasons I was like, Elche might just stay up, but then he's not been at it at all so far. No, so no. let's see if they let's see if they have a semi new manager bounce against Mallorca tomorrow. Uh, but it, it's it's Mallorca. Like I, I think I think Mallorca is gonna win this. Yeah, yeah. Aguirre, Aguirre won't be beaten by some novice, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and also I was like, if as, if Francisco was still the manager at this point, I was like, if you got beaten heavily by Mallorca, then you don't deserve to coach anymore, because Mallorca are one new team. <laughs> Yeah. They shouldn't be beating you badly. No. But then be. again, given that Mariki and Kangin are really doing well and that Mallorca actually played good against Barca, definitely think they'll, they'll win. Yeah. And, and so before we leave La Liga, this section, um, who is the best player and who you consider the best performing team this weekend? Best performing team, I'll give it to Almeria because this was a huge win for them. Yeah. And the fact that they finally scored a goal, I think, deserves a lot of praise. <laughs> best, perf- best performing player, I, I, I was going to give it to Jose Luis Espanol, well done, but I'll give it to Bryce Mendes because he's been in good form this season and he scored what could be a very massive goal in the European race whether it's top four or Europa League, it's pretty massive to me. Yeah, I think for myself, in terms of best performing team, I would agree with you that would be Almeria because like, they did get that big win. In terms of the player, I'll go to Sturgeon because I oh, remember him from true, last season. True, true, true. And it was so criticized. And this like this past two weeks, or he's made so yeah, can, can I change that? Yeah, yeah, you can. No, it is that I made up my mind before the Celta game that I give it to Bryce or Hustle. But then the Celta game just happened now, so I haven't really thought back about this again. But yeah, that performance was massive because when your whole team, when your midfield and attack are completely dysfunctional <laughs> in the second half of the game, I'm sorry, I have to be harsh with the boys. They, they were not good at all. Yeah. And your defense is in is basically using a walking stick yeah. because everyone else is injured. You need your goalkeeper to come out big. And that save you made against Aspas one-on-one, I definitely thought Aspas was going to score. I was like, okay, Aspas always does this to us. Why not? Yeah. And then boom. <laughs> I'm like, yes, even Aspas can't score against us now. We're going to win everything. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see yeah. about that. Though. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And, and let's move over, over to across the continent to England. 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 Where <laughs> Liverpool are going back to being loser poor at the moment. And <laughs> they keep on losing. Yeah. A massive, another massive win for Arsenal. And 
there. And after beating Tottenham last week, beating Liverpool, despite the fact that Liverpool are talking about what they're doing, is re- a really big statement, in my opinion. And maybe everyone should take our Teta ball a bit ser- more serious. <laughs> Gra- granted, Man City are still around, but Arsenal are really grown as a team since their terrible start to last season. Yeah, and does this, like, should Spanish teams be worried about Arsenal in the Europa League, given the form that they're showing at the moment? I mean, the fact that they're top of the, top of the table means you should definitely worry about them because... But I feel like on a given day, Real Betis can definitely do something with Arsenal. Risto said that. I'm not as sure, but Risto said that seems to be growing as a team. So definitely, I feel like they can beat Arsenal on their day. It's just will their day be against Arsenal. Sure. So, and Arsenal um, can definitely beat some of them too. So yeah, hopefully Spanish heritage wins if it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, but but for sure it's like it seems like regardless we're going to be seeing Arsenal in the Champions League next season. Like, yeah, regardless whether they win the win a European trophy for once or they finish in top four, I feel it's going to happen. Yeah, for 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 someone like me who hasn't really like watched this team, like what's the difference between them? this season and last season where they were struggling so much? I feel I feel that if defensively, we have to talk about how they've improved defensively over the past two seasons. Because yeah. the season before this last one, 2021, they, didn't, they finished fifth or sixth in the league, but they had the third best defense in the league. They only considered 39, which by our no standards in the last years of Wenger and in the years of Emery and the early years of Ateta is amazing. So I feel like that defensive improvement has really helped them to focus on the attacking talents they've always had. And honestly, I feel last season they could have easily gotten top four. It's just that Arsenal had their own worst enemy and that mentality problem they, that's something they have to overcome if they want to press a team. Because there was a week last season where they lost three games in a row yeah. to three mid-table teams. And you can't do that if you want to keep improving. Yeah, that is very true, especially when you have a team like Man City who score four, score five, it seems every game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I guess it's also good news like Chelsea that they're they're getting wins again. They beat Milan in the Champions League 3-0. Did you see that coming? I didn't see them completely overpowering them. I felt like whoever won that game would win it in a close way. But yeah, it was yeah. a brilliant performance by Chelsea. And yeah, in, and in the league, they're back at it. So maybe we shouldn't rule them out of teams yet. Yeah. But let's talk about Milan. They didn't have magic Mike Mannion, so maybe that was part, part of the reason why. Oh, Mannion didn't play that game. No, he didn't play that game. That, that, that explains things, because I did book <laughs> trick rights. So I was yeah. really shocked. I was like, what happened? Yeah, but luckily for Milan, they, they won against Juventus this weekend. Huh. Poor Juve. Poor Juve. Poor, poor Juve. <laughs> <laughs> Who yeah. they, they keep on struggling. I, I don't know, but you may you may you may. Yeah, and but in the Champions League, at least they got they did what they were supposed to do. It's just that PSG didn't did fulfill it. their end of the proposed bargain. No. Yeah. But, Benfica but, Benfica made life difficult in oh, Paris. Yeah. That was actually a very good game. I, I I watched it and I was like, I was super impressed by Benfica. I was super impressed by the way they pressed, the way they um, attacked PSG. And, and PSG, they were coming to that game out of form somewhat. So I felt like that was going to be a big opportunity for them. But your boy Messi, like he scored an amazing goal. Yeah, Messi has been on fire since before. He, I feel he's the only, I thought he was the only person the international break didn't affect until he got <laughs> injured. Yeah. But, this but, damn international break. <laughs> but as things stand, PSG, they also drop points in Liga, so they're... Um, yeah, and Messi didn't play, so we can 
run, we can start to run an agenda now, can we? Yeah, we can. We can. We can. We can. Lorient are one point behind them. But going back to the Champions League, though, and going back to Juve, I feel for Juve, the game that they need to win is this one coming up. Because in Israel, I feel that's where they would have a crowd against them and they yeah. can crumble. Yeah, PSG struggled a bit in Israel before the obvious quality took um, control of the game. But for a long period of that game, I felt PSG were kind of, they were kind of shocked by the intense atmosphere in Israel. So UV definitely need that win. Otherwise, it's over for me because yeah. they, they, they have to beat Benfica too. Yeah. In the next game, but if they win, if they lose this one, it's over because you can't rule out Benfica picking up something quite different, quite differences. Yeah, you, you can't rule that out. And I and also feel like Juventus going to Lisbon will be a very tough game. Well, they're away to lose. Oh, goodness. Yeah, it it does get game. harder for them. Yeah, because they needed to, they needed PSG to like beat, beat the crap out of Benfica in both games. And Maybe win in win in Lisbon, and hope that PSG will play like their reserves because of the World Cup coming up. So, mm. yeah. But yeah, let's let's move on to German things in Germany. Union Berlin extended a lead in the Bundesliga thanks to Bayern dropping points against some small team called Borussia Dortmund. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, that's... Dortmund fans don't kill me about this, but I'm just joking. <laughs> but that, that was a brilliant game, though. Yeah, a brilliant way to end the derby. And <laughs> did you see that picture of Khan oh, after man. the game? It was glorious. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I feel like this kind of game for the classic is good because Bayern have been dominating the recent fixtures so much. So to get in an important point like that and stay level with them on points is pretty good. And who knows where this result might lead because Bayern. While well, they've been very good in the Champions League, they've been somewhat unconvincing in the Bundesliga. Yeah, very unconvincing. Like I believe they've drawn about like four, four, four games. Four games, yeah. And mm-hmm. it seemed they were they were cruising to a victory in this game. They scored two goals, but Dortmund came back roaring. Mokuoku is <laughs> trying to prove that he can replace Holland. And then Modest, when he came on, he had he had a golden chance to equalize. And I was like, God, oh, this, 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 this was the chance. But you know what? God had something to stop for him, something greater, and he got that. Idea. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's kind of equalizer in the ninety something minutes is definitely much more heroic than scoring it before. <laughs> yeah. Although well, it does increase the risk of heart attacks, but anyway. <laughs> and and I just love the celebrations at the end with the players jumping yeah. in, like tears. Yeah, there was, the was really great scenes there. And thank goodness he remembered not to take off his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if he was on yellow before, but that that's it's always wise to use your head. Milik, Milik earlier this season. <laughs> Although he should, he that goal should have stood, but yeah. still. <laughs> Oh, you never know which without bad referees are these days. You never know. You never know. And, and for Bayern, like, does this put the pressure on Julian Nagelsmann? Because during the game when Bayern were winning Caesar, I was thinking to myself, you know what? There have been all this talk about Julian Nagelsmann not being so great this season, but in the big test, he's actually performed well or got some results. Like he Bayern beat Inter 2 0 at San Siro, they beat Barcelona 2 0. It was like they beat him BVB 2 0, but as with football, things change very quickly. And yeah. does this draw change the complexion around surrounding Bayern season? Well, I feel it's too early to judge them because Bayern have had, I think Bayern have had an even worse start to the season than this, but they still ended up winning the league. So I, I don't think that's too much of, that's enough to question him. But definitely in his young career, this is probably one of his more difficult moments. So it will be interesting to see if he can get out of it in one piece. Yeah, and for BVB, does this give them hope that maybe... Yeah, it definitely it does, them. honestly. Yeah. It does. Like I was saying before, getting a huge result in this way against Bayern, because you are so close to losing this game, but then to come back and everything, I feel like this should really serve them well going into the Champions League and yeah. um, 
going to other Bundes to their games. Because yeah. if they beat Sevilla, and I think if they beat Sevilla, that should be it for them, right? Yeah, they it should be true. Yeah, be then they can just focus on the Bundesliga from then on. Yeah, and let's not forget they were very good against Manchester City in, in that first game. So yeah, if they can, they win, were just unlucky against Haaland. Yeah, yeah, and if they can win the game in Germany by two clear goals, which against Man City it, it, it's a tall order, but like if they can win by two clear goals, they stand a chance to be top of the group. And so you can't really write this. Yeah, group. then they can avoid Club Brugge. Yeah, they can avoid Club Brugge and the <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, but but in the line with German teams, uh, we have a Spanish manager in the Bundesliga. Do you know who that is? Uh, Xabi Alonso. Xabi Alonso, King Xabi. Like, what 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 should we expect from him? I mean, his results at B team were very good, even though they ultimately got relegated. It's usually a tall order for B team to stay in the division, but I felt yeah. like they gave a good fight of it. So definitely I feel like even the first game, the be shot of 4-0, they should expect a lot of I definitely expect a lot of things from him because I believe he's there's a very good manager in there. It's just that since he's a young manager, there are definitely going to be bumps along the way. Like I see with our Javi over here. Yeah. <laughs> it's not always going to be perfect. So yeah. But hopefully he can do something good with Bayer Leverkusen because they're a team I like. Yeah, and it has really... nothing to do with the fact that they follow me back on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It'll be so like hilarious if she knocks out Diego Simeone's Atletico when they play them. Yeah. Red. <laughs> that will be hilarious, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, I mean, I, I still, but I, the thing is that. Well, Atleti lost two games. Those two games were on the road, and on the road, the Champions League, anything can happen. So, yeah, I think the things might be different with the Metropolitan. It's still called the Metropolitan, right? Yes. Yeah, it's Civitas. not that one. That it's no, not that one. That. It's yeah, I, I like yeah. the one. Yeah, one, one, one does a nice ring to it. Yeah, yeah, but definitely, I feel like Atleti will have the better results at home. Yeah, yeah, I I feel so too. But like we we all thought they would against Berger and Leverkusen for some They'll around. just win, they'll just win both games in the one hundred and thirtieth minute okay, after yeah. the game is paused <laughs> for five, fifteen minutes because Felipe elbowed somebody. somebody. And, and Griezmann is scoring. <laughs> oh man, yeah. But yeah, I think I think that that does it for this week, Oscar. Thank you so much for no problem um, doing this with me again, and uh, thank you. Next ne- ne- next week, point. you might be hearing me cry for two reasons at most. So you <laughs> should all hope that I'm in a good mood next week, and I'm like, you know, yeah. we beat both in time Real Madrid, but. Yeah, in, but, but in football, you don't get what you want all the time. <laughs> True, and the good news for you is that we're gonna record like five or six hours after the game, so you have enough time. Five or six after the game, because it, it's gonna end at twelve thirty U.S. time. Right? Oh, okay, okay. Well, well, I'll have enough time to cry. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And adios.